another episode of Woody's Roundup Podcast, where today's episode, we talk about Disney Plus and our reviews. We're going to mention The Mandalorian and how well that went down, as well as a few tidbits about Mickey's very merry Christmas party. Hey, Woody. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I, I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. Um, Who's the smartest Disney character? Mm. Mm-hmm. Guest on. He won the Nobel Prize. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, first of all, before we get too far into this episode, um, you know, just like Disney Plus, plus a few of us tend to have technical difficulties when doing something. So I want to apologize for the first couple episodes if you listen to them and one of us sounded like we were in the other room. Me. That is not intentional. Okay. So uh, our sound engineer, the new one, uh, now has gone through and remixed all the old episodes. And if you listen to them and you're like, man, that sounds weird, you can re-download them. Or if you listen to it and it sounded good to you, then don't do anything different. Just keep listening to the new ones. So that's my little... Thanks for that. Technical you disclaimer. You fixed us. I fixed us. Sorry. Yeah. I got it. All good now. So let's talk about <clears throat> Disney Plus. Let's start things off with a bang. Okay. I am pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I um, awoke to all of our TVs being ready to go, logged in. Disney Plus was was there. What a nice thief that came in our house and did that. And what, what a, a nice guy. Wow. Man. You were up early, <laughs> huh? I did. I, I very rarely like get like new technology normally doesn't make me deviate from my daily plan, but this this did. I actually woke up early. I wanted to test it um before everybody woke up. Right. I mean, before like the East Coast was going to hit the service because I had a feeling I just had a feeling like, man, they're going to get bombarded today. And good thing I did. But yeah, I went around, installed the the app on all the televisions, on the phones, logged in, set up your profile with uh, your profile, your profile picture. And I took a quick, uh, I would say about 45 minutes going through the lineup of what was on there just and I was. I know we're going to talk about it in a second, but I was blown away by like the cartoons. One that I forgot about Two that I was like, they are serious about this. This means they are, um, they're not playing when they met, they are pulling everything from the vault on this. So I love I, it. I too was pleasantly surprised. I love it. So there were some hiccups. Um, I know for me, I, what it was it like, I think I was up and at it on my, Disney Plus Day, which it was so cute. Woody said Happy Disney Plus Day when I woke up. It was perfect too. It was rainy. It was yeah. Overcast. It was a good day. It was cold outside. Um, but yeah, so a couple things I got caught in like loading loops where I would click on you know an option or a title and it would just sort of give me that gorgeous little pixel you know kind of yeah. wheel. Um, but hey, I would. I wasn't upset. If, believe it or not, I was like, "It's Disney. It's fine. It's going to be fine," and it was. And it, it was fine. It was. It was okay. I couldn't access a couple different things. And then when you would get to a main screen, sort of, if you chose movies or if you chose um, series, I would only get maybe the first twelve or eighteen, and then it would be just like little blank squares, like something was coming. Um, so if you would go, for example, to like A to Z, so series A to Z, it would really only give me up to C. Yeah, it was like it was like it was loading half of the things. Yeah. And then you would go like for one tangle the series, like season two would pop up, season one wouldn't show up, and you knew that season one you just saw it like five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I but the funny part was was that I had it on my TV in my home office and I accessed everything fine, right? And then I went downstairs, installed it on that one, like a few minutes later. And then that one had quite a few hiccups, then came upstairs to yours and yours worked fine. Um, And then about 30 minutes later, it started. So I think it was just the East Coast waking up and everybody just hitting the server. And to talk about that, 
um, Disney released a statement. It, it far exceeded our expectations, the demand for the first day. So how many subscribers, Laura, hmm. do you think subscribe to Disney Plus on the first day? Two million. Aha. Ten million Whoa. subscribers. So that, it, but here's the thing. Their, their uh, comment it far exceeded our expectations. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I love you, Disney. But this is from the same company that can track you anywhere in the park you are <laughs> and take pictures of you on a ride and you not know that they even know you're on the ride. And then they text you those pictures a few seconds later. So I have a hard time believing they didn't know that, you know, everybody would want this service. But you know what? I, I Like you said, you knew they were going to work it out. You knew by the end of the day it was going to be fine, or tomorrow they would it would all level out. So. Oh yeah, seamless now, and we love it. So oh, it's been wonderful. So I've been watching. If you want to know, yeah. Although you can access my watch list anytime you want. Uh, <laughs> we basically have the same watch list, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The other day things were drastically different as upstairs and downstairs. But... You were watching Fancy Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> And I was watching uh, Tailspin. That was about the biggest difference. I love Fancy Nancy. And yes, I'm almost 40 years old. But no, um, I like her little French. I like that she is. Uh, she's merci it's, beaucoup. It's I just cute. love it. So um, I've been watching Tangled, the series. And let me tell you, I'm a Disney princess fan. I'm that girly girl. I'm, I'm just going to give it to you. But I'll tell you this pleasantly surprised because you said it when it was on Disney TV. XD. Okay. I think it was on Disney XD, I think. We didn't watch it. No, we, we DVR'd it. And just with DVR, everybody knows, like, I, it's, it sounds extremely lazy. I get it. But, like, when you DVR something, like, the we've had other shows where we're like, oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay, DVR it. And uh, weeks go by because a new episode comes out every week. Yeah. You lose track. You have something going on that night. Then you skip through the commercials and it has this weird feeling. And it just kind of drifted away. Mm -hmm. But luckily, you rediscovered. Yes. I love that show. And, and I made Woody sit down and watch Pascal's Beginning. <gasps> which is me. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. like <laughs> That little thing. That little thing. If you haven't seen this series... Like you should watch it for one because it's hilarious and it's the same voices that oh, yeah. were in the movie. Oh yeah. But two, just the writing in it is really good. Brilliant. And the animation is, I love that style of animation. I, well, I love two D, and mm -hmm. that is two D. You yes. know that it's just a different, um, a different type. But ah, oh, that was a great episode. It just reminds you of like Disney. Y'all know Disney. how to make me cry. <laughs> and you just love Pascal. Yeah, it is an awesome episode. Um. I've also been watching DuckTales mm. and just to hear the intro, oh, just to you. hear Scrooge um, do talk. It, do it. Do the voice. Oh, God, I can't. <laughs> do the voice. Scrooge McDuck, you know, and it's fantastic. But um, anyway. Oh, wait, wait. She's got one more. We're going to talk about this, but uh, all right, so she was, uh, she makes candles and soaps as well like she'll go through batches and she'll, she'll make that in the kitchen all while having 99% of the time she has something Disney on in the background this was before, even before Disney Plus so I was like all right what can we put on that won't distract you that took us like 30 minutes I'm not gonna <laughs> lie okay well no I kind of okay uh, uh finally she halfway set I just I had to get work done so I was like we halfway settled on brave okay yeah me knowing though that like because well, I, I love the music she's gonna brave. end up getting distracted but i was just like okay we've looked through 30 minutes of material and okay do the do, do the brave do <laughs> you're a bear <laughs> well, oh it's so good <laughs> she does it all the time I okay sorry Mom, okay. you're a real bear <laughs> no so it's good. okay you just gotta love Meredith. you did great no so okay i pre really presently um on my watch list is also gummy bears. Let me tell you, I'm so excited. That what a wonderful cartoon. And you did not watch that as a kid. I did not. I in my head, I know I'm gonna get slammed for this. I was mistaking gummy bear gummy bears and care bears. I know. Horrible. It's yeah, it's a sin. 
Um, and then, so you said gummy bear. And then we started, I was like, well, hold up. This is not what I thought it was. I thought it was going to be like a rainbow shooting from one of them's stomach. No, that's <laughs> no. not it. But this was like, I was, I loved it. Like, and it's, it's, it was in the eighties mm-hmm. and it instantly gave me an idea. Like not, you know, go from commercial <laughs> video person to Disney director, but it, that if there was ever a cartoon where you could go in and make a combination live action CGI mix, right? Movie yep. that would be the perfect epic slash family friendly uh, adventure series save, there ever was. Save that because yeah. I feel like we could do a podcast. That's a whole nother episode. Because let me tell you this, folks, he has Woody has casted it already. Yep. He, I've got the care, everything, <laughs> everything down to who I would even have write the score for it oh yes it is like we'll do we'll do an episode we'll do an episode but um so what are you watching so what's on your current list oh well all right so when it first started i went through like instant nostalgia right like i hit tailspin um the new adventures of winnie the pooh like that intro like i it i almost had to pause it because it it takes you a second like it's like oh my gosh saturday mornings yeah oh yeah um uh bonkers oh boy <laughs> is that one bonkers uh mighty ducks the cartoon um what else what else did i actually well we're gonna get to the big show in a second yes the big show in a second okay but like like i i went through basically all of the gold 90s animated cartoons yeah and have at least watched the first episode yes right um yeah, and just like just the best one off the top of my head was Tailspin. Like that one, I automatically was just like, oh, this is awesome. And and then really the fact that one, like we said, they have bonkers on there. Okay, which is bonkers. Not, not a lot of people have heard about it. <laughs> um, and the Mighty Ducks cartoon. You remember that? Which you know vaguely, <laughs> but then as soon as I heard you hit play, and then heard the beginning, I was like, yep. I yep. can remember probably, yep. though, knowing myself, just sort of heard it, maybe was in the other room, and then ended up coming back to the TV and then switching the channel. Yeah. Because I probably wouldn't have watched it, but. Yeah. It's, but it's like, that to me showed, like, Disney, Disney is serious. Like, they yeah. really meant what they said. And we called it earlier. I was wondering if they would do it. But they absolutely put the sequels on there mm-hmm. that I love, that you know, a lot of people hate on. I love them. Uh, and they even have the Little Mermaid like animated series. It was like three seasons long, and so like they really did reach back and put everything on there, which we were hoping they would. Yeah. And even if you had an idea like Disney's gonna put everything, when you see it all, like there, there's no way to be disappointed in what they're giving you for six ninety nine a month. There's right. no way. You're right. Like, and if you have not signed up for it, like. My gosh. Yeah. Uh, go go get your seven day trial or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And it like honestly, like for value, it yeah. is it is an unbelievable especially if you enjoy family entertainment. You know, like really like you can cut it on and walk away from the T V and not uh, not worry if your kids are seeing something that you really don't want them to see or whatever, or a commercial come on and you know, like this is like the str- like it really is. Like it's a great it's a, it's a, it's a, just, it's a great home for all those movies. And another thing, I read a report where people were like hacking into the, the Disney app, you know, well, I mean, not hacking, but like looking at the code, right? Like it's, you can do it, but like they were seeing expiration dates by some of the movies, right? What they thought were expiration dates. And so they were seeing like Princess and the Frog, for example. Uh huh. They saw like 11 25 2019. Of course, everybody's like, You gonna what? You only give us like a week to watch this? What? And no, Disney's like, No, listen, unless they change this, this is what they were saying about that. They were saying that, uh, No, this is the permanent home of all of our movies. Oh. We are not rotating content. We are not, you know, like this is our permanent home home i love that so i i hope they stick to that you know i really do because those just for example just just like us watching the new adventures of winnie the pooh Uh again how likely would we have been to go out and buy 
the Blu-ray or even buy the series on Apple TV. Zero percent. Zero. We want it. We, we'd love to see it. And we'd probably watch the intro on YouTube. But in the end, it's like, will we spend money for that? Probably not. However, by you having a home for it with all this other content, guess what shows people are going to go and just binge now? Shows they haven't seen in 20 years that y'all have been, the Disney's been sitting on. It's mm-hmm. just, again, like I know we're like, I'm not getting any, we're not getting any kickbacks at all, believe me, but <laughs> it's, it's just a wonderful service. And I was, it, it far exceeded my expectations as well. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I, I think too, it's only going to help merchandise it's only going to help their parks it's only going to help attractions that may have not seen the crowds but now looking at all this content people are going to access parts of them and they're just going to renew sort of character love renew you know familiarities that that we all have and and we're the age group honestly, that I think will get the most out of Disney Plus. And I don't care who wants to argue with me <laughs> over that. But um, yeah, I, do, I, I agree because I feel like there, there is just that's why this is a non Disney property. But one of the reasons I think Stranger Things has been so popular is because yes, it's a, it's a great story. Mm-hmm. And it's a great series. But it also resonates with people our age and a little bit older for something that 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 is 80s 90s you know something like that type of entertainment so i feel like we we are searching i know for i've told you this before people are searching for those feel good memories yeah right they are searching for something that brings them to an instant when life was not chaotic mm. there were no bills you know it's just <laughs> a, a different time and i think like we're at that age now where we're seeing a lot change mm. a lot like we're witnessing just every aspect of the world change. And so we're we're looking for that one thing that right. could take us back to a Saturday morning. And sure enough, you put on the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh and you tell me if everything else just doesn't just drift away for a second. You know, so I it is well worth the six ninety nine a month, in my opinion. Yes. So how about we take a step back and let's talk about the the episode that we just watched rushed up here said we're gonna do a whole episode yeah, gotta talk about it you gotta talk go <laughs> not Rich, a whole episode that. we won't do that to y'all but um the mandalorian all right i'm gonna say this okay the mandalorian i'm not the first to say this by the way i don't take credit for it is probably the best thing to happen to star wars since like the original trilogy or or okay maybe not even that drastic since like the shows, the Clone Wars, the cartoons, mm. since those were made. And I mean that because while the prequels were good, they got a lot of hate, right? And The Force Awakens, I, I liked it. I, it. Great movie. Last Jedi, I, I don't know why it gets the hate it does. I, I enjoyed it. But like The Mandalorian, like I'm excited for that. Like I'm excited now. and And I think because it just takes a second. You know, it's not this, well, we don't know yet, but it's not this, you know, the end of the galaxy type of threat right now. It is like, we're getting to know characters, you know, we, we're going to be with them for a couple of episodes and it, it is the, I think it's the best thing to happen to Star Wars. I think it's going to give it the shot it needs. So growing up, I can remember my dad owning the VHS tapes. I'm pretty sure he would watch um, one more than the other, and I, I'm trying to think of the one right off the top of my head. Probably the Empire Strikes Back. It's probably that one. That's the one. Now, most so tell people. me, tell me the Empire Strikes Back. What's a scene in that? Oh, that's the. I mean, that's the middle movie. Though. I guess the biggest. Is that Yoda? Yeah, yeah, that's Yoda, baby. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So this is this is what's funny about Woody and I. It's because I'm relatively new to the Star Wars game, other than. Yes, I remember them growing up, and I remember maybe watching them a couple times. Um, definitely remember, you know, the the untouched versions. What was it like this time where 
the, the, I, I read it yeah. a lot about it. It's like where they went in and redid some <laughs> the, things. Yeah, the original and then the special edition. Okay. And then he just can't quit playing around. Well, he can now because he doesn't know <laughs> it anymore. But so, I, you know what, though? Like for the longest time, I was like, George, you need to let it go. But honestly, if I had the money he did and I owned like the most popular franchise in the world, I'd always want to go back in there and be like, oh, man, okay. That, that person's hair was out of place in that scene. Let me fix it if I could, you know? Yeah. So like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't, but I, you can't hate on him too much for it. So I remember you and I a couple years ago watching it and you literally could tell me, okay, all right, coming up here, this is new. And this guy, this, this, you know, CG monster, he's new. And, okay. and Ch- Jabba's tail, that wasn't, that wasn't there originally. <laughs> and it was like watching pop-up video. Yeah. with you but it's hard watching the movie but though. as someone who appreciates just quality you know i appreciate like this is an example off topic a little bit but like the walking dead i recognize the good seasons and then i recognize the kind of subpar you mean from season five to whatever's on right yeah. now okay yeah we haven't even finished it yeah. one of those things we dvr yeah. lose interest but i think for me when I watched it, I instantly was like, okay, this guy's cool. I like him. I like his vibe, you know? And then I think I asked you, is that Boba Fett? And you just looked at me and you said, no. Uh, <laughs> like- well, I will. All right, here's the thing. <laughs> I am not a Star Wars historian. Hey, but okay. I'm just proud I even knew the yeah. dude's name, but well, I know it's not him. I don't know. Him, who, but- you know, who knows though? Honestly, <laughs> that's, I think that's the part I, ever since like the, like the prequels, right? Like, I don't, I don't know a whole lot. I really don't on the new things on anything. Like I, I, I read reviews, but other than that, like, you know, it's, it's, it's all new to me. So like for this show, I really don't know what time it takes place. I don't know. I think it takes place after the original trilogy, uh, before force awakens, but I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything and I might be totally off and you feel free to just let me know. But I think that's, I think that's why I like it so much. I don't know a lot, you know, like I, I don't, I don't, I'm discovering stuff. Mm. Like I, I don't know a lot about this character. Cause I didn't read, you know, a bunch of forums about it. Like, I, I don't, I don't, well, what are they going to, what is, what, who is he hunting? You know, like who, right. who is he? Is, is he Boba or is he another Mandalorian? Are we looking at the origin story? Or, I don't know, whatever. But all I know is that I love, that they are taking their time. Like it was, it was enough action in this, but it was, it was also just, I don't like, I'm enjoying the journey, I guess, you know? And I feel like the last couple of movies have been just so much mm-hmm. like they're trying to cram so much in there. Like, you know, we, we've talked about cartoons that are made now that they, they there's 50 cut scenes in a couple of seconds. And you just like are overwhelmed, right. you know, but like, this is like, it, it made me think, of like an old Western, mm-hmm. you know, like an old John Wayne or an old spaghetti Western movie with Clint Eastwood. It was like, yeah, this is cool. And they're taking their time, which I love. What does the word spaghetti mean in it's a Western? Spaghetti, if, if from <laughs> spaghetti Western, <laughs> it was like um, the, uh, and it was like they were making Westerns in Italy back in the day. And like, it was an Italian director who kind of brought that style to America. Cause at the time, like there was the John Wayne Western in America and the, you know, how do you part, you know, that, that type. And then all of a sudden um, you have this Italian director bringing over that style. And it was just, I don't know. It's just like a, you know, style to it. I think okay. again, could be wrong. And let me know I was on just Instagram. Thinking you would sit down and eat spaghetti and watch <laughs> Western. <laughs> I, I have done that before too. So <laughs> that could be. So, yeah. so what I think, for me, the first scene, and, and if you haven't seen the Mandalorian first episode, stop, <laughs> pause, yeah. spoiler pause alert. Pause right now, go watch it, then come back. Yeah. So the whole scene where you're there in that bar in the original, you know, opening mm-hmm. opener is dark. Well, yeah, it's I it's think... kind of funny when the door closes. Oh, the... <laughs> well, I was like, okay, this is not <laughs> okay. for kids. Okay. All right. Um, but you still didn't see any blood. No, nah, no. Nah. You still didn't see anything. I just loved it. I that love the tone. That changed it, though, for me. I was like, okay, this is going to be, oh, all right, I'm buckling up. I'm now, I'm on the ride. Now, remember, we watched The Clone Wars, the cartoon. I and, love The Clone and Wars. And that, that actually 
had a little dark feel to it. You remember yeah. like some of the clones and some mm-hmm. of the battle scenes. Like we both said, like, oh wow, that was. I mean, we appreciated it that mm-hmm. that it was a mature show, but still didn't take it too far. But like, yeah, when you saw the door close on this dude, like it was like, okay, okay. I'm ready. All right, hit me. It it is. What'd you say? No, you did. You were sitting there on the couch. You're like, okay, John. Okay, John. Okay. <laughs> I love John uh, Favreau. Like he, like right. I it. He just is. He's firing on all cylinders. He's all over the place. But um, I just love it. I love. I don't know what else to say about it other than, uh, you got to watch it. You really don't even have to like. You don't have to know anything. Don't think, because I don't know a whole lot. Like you might. I might sound like I know enough about Star Wars or Star Trek, but honestly, you don't have to know a lot. It's just cool. Watch it, and it they're taking you on a journey, and it's a journey that I cannot wait. And I almost, while I want to binge it, right? Oh, yeah. While I want to binge it, I almost appreciate that I can't. Mm. You know, because now, it's because we've done this before, especially with a show like Stranger Things, where it was like, click, automatic, click, and then we... Oh, yeah. uh, it's eight o'clock in the morning. We've been, we've been <laughs> up all night, up all night. But like, this is like, it almost gives you a second to take a breath and be like, oh, that was awesome. Instead of just forgetting about the first episode right away. Did you get some of the Easter eggs? Did you see some of the little, um, throwbacks to the original? Yeah. They, they have some characters in there. So if you, yeah, from the original, if you, you got to look for like a split second, they've got some in cages and one room. Oh, he's on the spit. One on a little cooker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there are some things in there that's like, oh, okay, this is neat. Yeah. So I, I, I can't wait to see where it goes. And the cameos in it, like some of the, the actors and mm. and the voices are like, what? And that, like to me, this is why I feel like this is the best thing to happen to Star Wars. Because one, George Lucas always talked about a live action TV show for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, even five, ten years ago, you you can never really convincingly bring Star Wars to TV. You know, like, Star Trek is different because it usually takes place in the bridge that you can build and there's not a lot outside of that, right? Star Wars is different. Star Wars is about traveling, galaxy to galaxy, whatever, planet to planet, everything, like characters, aliens everywhere. Like, so it's a little, it's, it's, a, it's different for TV, but to see this is like, man, okay, we've arrived at that time where there's a, the, no longer is there a line between, you know, movie and TV, you know, like we're now in a time where Disney literally put just as much money in a TV series streaming than they would you know, a movie. So uh, I just, I can't wait to see where it goes. And I appreciate that they're putting that, that much uh, quality and talent into it. And I really think if they continue to do shows like this, if like the Obi-Wan show is going to be like this, Mm. uh, I mean, yeah, y'all can sit the movies out for a while. Cause like this will really build that new universe for me more so than a movie every year where I've got to know exactly what's happening. Like the Mandalorian, the pace of it is just enough. Right. Like you agree, right? I mean, wouldn't oh, you yeah. agree from like a standpoint of like, I don't want to be bombarded by, it's like we were making fun of, like I made fun of a little bit um, when we were in Galaxy's Edge, the names of the foods and everything. Yeah. We're like, I, I love it. And I love being immersed into the world, but as like a semi-casual, semi-hardcore fan, it was almost like, listen, I just tell me it's sausage and eggs. I don't, I don't need, I, I'm good, you know? And like, so like this, this show really for me is, it's just a good, I don't, it's good. It's just like right yeah, that line. Didn't that cast member tell you, you had so many credits you owed him? I didn't know what he was saying. I was like, I got what? <laughs> like, and I, I feel, trust me, I feel stupid because these people are dedicated to this and they're doing awesome. For me being just the impatient, like, I was like, what? I've got 20, what was 20, what? I, I don't know what that is. Is, that, is that money? I have is a that, credit. I don't know. No, how to I don't credit. want to use my credit card. I want to use my debit card. <laughs> so I, for me, it's just like, I just don't need that total, you know, yeah. immersion, but that's, so a, that's a whole nother. I'm, thing. I'm pleasantly surprised with the Mandalorian because I was recently let down by the new dark crystal. Ooh. And I'll tell you, this is, off a little bit but again Netflix you know we 
we um we just recently watched the Dark Crystal series, and actually, I don't Age think, of Resistance. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I was a I'm still Jim Henson has my heart like Walt Disney has it, and I live for puppets and the puppeteering and there was even that one show on a while ago remember it was like they were like trying to get hired on at the jim henson company yes that was, they, it was on sci-fi for yeah, like half they, a season or oh, i wish it was I don't, creature shop yes uh, something like jim that, yeah. henson's creature shop that's yeah. it and i remember we we were watching that and it was just awesome but the dark crystal is one of those things where it's like okay if you're gonna go back if you're gonna touch it it's gotta be great it's just gotta be great and I think with every episode I keep wanting it to be you know and and, and I'm getting the little easter eggs I'm getting why you know the the emperor has the metal beak I'm getting why you know all of these things I, I like the the you know the the scientist and how he lost his eye and you know it's like oh this is great. They're giving us all of this. But on top of that, they're giving you so much weight. And you know how it all ends, you well, know, because it's a prequel. All right, it's but not even. See, all right. So here's the here. My opinion. And not this don't let it turn to a rant. Feel free to cut me off. I, I think this is why Solo possibly didn't perform that well either uh, is because I don't. I don't think I don't know that Dark Crystal is getting bad reviews. I, I don't give it a bad review. It I love it. it. The amount of work that went into that show is mind blowing. Oh yeah, the puppeteering, every the special effects, everything is amazing. But what I'm saying is, I don't. I think people say they want to know, you know, mm. how somebody turned the way they did or whatever. Mm. But in the end, we don't need to know. Like honestly, I think it, and and the prequels exist. Star Wars prequels. Everybody knows this. I I could have done without knowing Anakin's journey. Yeah, I would have rather like, it's, and so I feel like Solo is the same thing. We know Han, like we know Chewie as they are. Let our imaginations kind of fill in the journey up until that point. Mm. And and I feel like that's why some of these prequels they they want to go back and they want to fill it in. They they've got this backstory, but I, in the end, I just I don't I don't need to know why. You know why Goofy is Goofy. I don't. Yeah. I like. You know. I want. I, I know Goofy, and I'm good. But my backstory, you're just not going to make everybody happy. You yeah. know. So I feel like that's why. I I do feel like that's why Disney now after re-listening to our other episode about why they chose a different planet for Galaxy's Edge. I see that now. I mm. see like they they are pushing it forward. They want you to explore. They want you to you know, go on your own journey and they don't want to be tied to uh, history so much, you know, because it really does limit them for what they do. So I, I see your, I see your, uh, you know. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I appreciate it. I love that it's puppets. I think that's the, the big pull for me because in The Mandalorian, when he's riding that sort of fish face dinosaur, I forget what it is. A blurb. Is that it? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> looks like a giant carp. It looks great. With, I, no, I, yeah. I'm I telling you. I still can't believe it's a TV show. Yeah. And that's not a puppet. And I kept having to say, that's yeah. CG. It you lo- know? It's unbelievable. And it's, His it's, eyeball. Or her, I guess. Right? Cause yeah. It's her. Because the... Well, spoiler alert. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the males die during mating. Oh, apparently. my gosh. They get eaten. <laughs> I love that part. And I think I love that part because it's that lighthearted... Yes sandwich you know like yep. i the, i live the for the droid. cream i live for the cream the, right <laughs> the small you know the small parts in there where you see the heart of the warrior you know you see him you know kind of horse whisper to the carp blur yeah, yeah. and you're like oh you know that for me that's the most exciting thing is to see beginning okay whoa buckle up this is going to be one of those two the sandwich in the middle, and then at the end, we love the end with the the intro to the droid sidekick slash yeah. Yeah, I I love I I just think again, you didn't have to be uh, a diehard Star Wars fan to appreciate this show. Mm. You know, like really, you anybody could have sat down. Oh yeah, and that's if me. If they're remotely that's me. into sci-fi or just whatever, 
and totally got this. And that's what so far episode one, I really appreciate that. It's like, man, this is nice. I really don't have to come in having read the star Wars, you know, Mandalorian history book, you know, surprising so, though. I'm surprised you didn't come to the table with that. <laughs> it's up in the attic. I'm gonna he it. just saying y'all, he, he has the most vault mind and he pulls it out at the most random of times. And it's, I'm like, it's a curse, really. It's <laughs> he never forgets. I don't forget anything. Anything. It's a curse. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> but uh, in review for Mandalorian, I, I can't really give it a proper review because I thought it was awesome. I thought so. Out of ten, you give just it eight. Give, eleven. Just go watch it. Just go <laughs> like cut. What are you doing listening to a podcast right now? If you haven't seen the hey, Mandalorian. whoa, 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 just we go want him. Watch the Mandalorian, and then come back and then tell me what I mispronounced and everything. But no, it's wonderful. I think it's just one, and it again, it just I feel like it will give. Not that Star Wars needs a boost by any means, but I really feel like it will give them the shot. It need like it. That's the type of universe building this new Star Wars Disney Star Wars needs mm. like that. You know, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes. So, I hope. I hope Episode Two lives up to Episode One. It's been renewed for a second season, so it must be fairly good. Yeah, and I've seen some reviews of of episode two and three that people are already saying it gets better, it gets better. And then even people who gave it a bad review based on episode one are now coming back and saying, I I don't even know how you would give it a bad review. I retract it. Somebody said it was dusty. See, that to me, that. And I'm going, what does that mean? That's why. I'm not. I, I don't mean to like discredit even us for reviewing stuff. That's why you honestly can't listen to reviews because if you listen to Rotten Tomatoes about half the movies out there, you'll never go see them. And then it's like this. Like I really, honestly, from a Star Wars slash uh, six ninety nine streaming app, like how could you possibly find anything negative about this show? Like really? Like it's like you you really can't. So ah, those reviewers out there. <laughs> Who are they? <laughs> Who are they? So we love Disney Plus. We also, well, I guess I can say not really we, but me, I have a whole new appreciation for the movie Inside Out. And I'm going to end it on that. Because oh, yeah. You watched that. I watched night. it again. Yeah. I watched it again. And I think the first time I was like, this is neat. This time I'm like blown, blown away at that movie. I could do a whole episode on Inside Out, but I won't. Um. So rounding up our podcast, I think it's about that time, just to say some good things about reviews as we're on that. Mickey's not, I mean, I'm sorry, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party is getting really good reviews, Woody. We yeah. haven't, we haven't been. We The one time we went for Thanksgiving, uh, we missed, the party was like the day, the night we were leaving or, or something. Y- or, or the week, day. yeah, or the week after. Cause... It was something. And and we were really sad we missed it because we're, hu- we're, we're huge fans of Not So Scary and, and, and do not think that we hate it because of my review for this year. It was just an insane crowd yeah. size. Um, I, I agree. Like you, th- these parties, like you're going to be... You have to remember, and I've kind of settled down from it. You have to remember that everybody just wants to enjoy this. You know, so it's going to be a lot of people there. That's right. And so, uh, yes, we absolutely would do a very merry Christmas party. We um, we looked at to sort of what this year's great. Yeah. What things. What, what are some of the things? Because we've never been. So what? We've ha- never been. So here's some. You found? Here's some cool things that I've heard. And and again, looking at our Instagram. So if you if you go on Instagram, follow us, Woody's Roundup Podcast. We would love to follow you as well. But I've been following a lot of different accounts. Um. And some of which I love just to see the photography. I love to see what's going on, what's hip, what's new. And of course, I'm looking for Christmas everything, you know, all things Christmas, Disney and the the like. But this year, um, like the not so scary Halloween party, there's those points of sort of presence. They're points of places where you can go different places like, you know, Tomorrowland uh, right outside their cafe, different starlight, you know, cafes have different treats and so when you first walk into the park you're going to get a mini sugar cookie 
It's got pink sprinkles. Oh and I just don't know why I'm not there right now. <laughs> but um, the, the cookies are, are the thing that gravitates you around the park. And so I've heard great things about at Pinocchio's, you know. I love that little restaurant. I know you by do. The it's way. your favorite. They hand out a um. Well, they I think they have a couple, but the main one is their Snickerdoodle, mm. and then you can make your way around. And Frontierland does a peppermint cookie. Oh my goodness! And then you know, I, and I may be getting them wrong as far as where they are, but um. But does it matter? Duh, no. It sounds magical. There's a there's a molasses cookie, like a ginger you know, snap. I think there's also, you know, of course the traditional chocolate chip and then there's hot cocoa. And someone said in years before they just gave you a cookie and a napkin. And then Disney soon found out, okay, Hey, this isn't really the best way. It's a little out of code for us. Um, we could be breaking some germ lines here. Let's go back to the drawing board. And so then couple years go um, by and then they give you now in a clear bag. And so everybody's like, oh, yay, thank you. I feel so much better about eating this cookie because I know nobody else has touched it. Whatever, I would eat it from anything. I'd eat it off the ground. I don't care. Um, but now the new thing is the themed bag. It's got the the logo. It's got Mickey and Minnie. And it's got and everybody thinks that history is now made because you can now collect these little tiny bags. Oh, they'll be all over eBay. They Disney's will. so smart. They are. And hey, let's make a collector plastic bag. Well, and, that and think about it as a, as and a, I'm one of them, so I can't really complain. Well, but. I mean, think about it. Like your kid goes back to school, and you guys have been in Orlando, and you've been to the party, and then all of a sudden you reach into your book bag, and there are the the trash. You know, there's that trash from the party, and you go. Oh, I'm going to put their sandwich in this little bag and maybe it'll just help them have a more magical day. I don't know. I think about it like that. I think it's another little memento to put in your adventure book or into your scrapbook or something. And and I just think Disney does it right. Um, so, and again, they're doing apple cider this year. Great reviews on the cocoa, not so great reviews on the apple cider because they're basically just saying it's warm apple juice, which makes sense. Disney does it for kids. Not all kids like cider. So I think they do this pretty smart. But again, Fanta stations. So I think you can grab some sodas while you're there because it's not 40 degrees like it is here. You know, today was what? High of 28. Yeah. <laughs> Freezing. So, you know, again, hot cocoa when it's 90 degrees is not the greatest, but they've had some milder days. So already, though, sold out the 24th of this month. You can't go um, the 22nd of December. So the last Very Merry Party sold out. Um, I can only imagine what those nights are going to look like. I hope those that of you that are going will reach out to us, will let us know how your party went. We're excited. We're hoping to have some upcoming guests, Woody. Yes. So, well, so, well, and and I have to credit Laura. She has been very active on Instagram, and it, we love connecting with people. We love connecting with people. So when we have people tell us they listen to the podcast, it really makes our day. Yes. And when they follow on uh, Instagram and they comment, and we just share kind of a Disney moment, you know, because we actually have Disney friends that we've never <laughs> met in real life that's right but we on instagram or whatever always talk disney with them and it's just you know it's just that magic of that so um yes we we are going to have some guests because they've heard the podcast and they kind of reached out through social media and we're kind of we're really excited about it we love it like i love that uh people are uh, semi-responding you know yeah. is, that, is that a good way oh to... yeah i mean definitely and people have even thanked us for making the decision in their household whether or not to buy <laughs> disney plus or not and that's just something really exciting because our goal is never to be negative really um our goal is always to be something that can be of help um and then of course we just love to talk about love disney, disney. And so, yeah, you know, we want you to reach out. We certainly want you to follow us back. And um, and, and we'll, of, of course, we'll follow you. Email us, text us, however that is easy for you. Um, we'd love to hear from you, but we're excited about the upcoming guests that we're going to have. Anything else to say? No, I'm good. Go, go watch The Mandalorian <laughs> right now. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah.